Antonio Mendez, and I'm in charge of Customer Insights. Today, for a few minutes, uh, we are going to tell you what is it that we do at the Customer Insights Department at Cambridge University Press, how we do it, and most importantly, how we apply the insights we gather from you. All our operation is about you, and uh, you are our only source of uh, information. I'm going to give you three examples, um, some from some time ago, others uh, more recent, about work uh, we've done and what we learned after uh, speaking with you. First thing, it's an example from a primary uh, series that we now uh, have published uh, some time ago. It's called uh, Cambridge Primary Path. Uh, Cambridge Primary Path was the first series that uh, Cambridge published for the most, uh, the very advanced uh, levels in primary. We didn't have any experience with it, so what we did is went out and spoke with English coordinators, like many of you, English teachers, like many of you, and uh, with the families. We spent some two weeks uh, in the field um, talking uh, to all these people and asking about their situation, how they go about teaching, the challenges they face, their happy moments and the moments that are not uh, so happy uh, for them. Um, I wish you could read what's on the screen. I understand it's very, very small. This is just a small piece of a very large uh, poster. Some of the things uh, we learned um, was uh, meaningful uh, communication. Families, coordinators, uh, teachers uh, told us that yes, many uh, textbooks, many course books and series had a very rigorous syllabus and program, but then the families went to, I don't know, to Disney or to a trip in the US and the children could not order pizza. So, um, and that was frustrating uh, to all, to teachers, coordinators, and family. So one of the things that we made sure, and if you flip through uh, any of the, the books in uh, Primary Path, is this communicative aspect of it, uh, oral uh, communication um, that is included and embedded. So you see the design pillar uh, over there. Another thing that uh, we heard, and I'm going to uh, move to another example soon, is that oftentimes these high level uh, series and courses are too serious, too dry, and that we need to keep in mind that the audience is a seven year old, an eight year old. So the products and the books and the materials, digital or paper, need to be warm, need to be accessible uh, to these children. Their English might be very good, but they are still uh, children. So the design that uh, was applied to it, the graphics, the visuals, and also uh, the content, an effort was made to be relevant, to be uh, age appropriate for these children, uh, not to forget that it's not just small children. We also heard a lot from families and from schools about best ways to involve busy parents in their education, in the English learning uh, process of their children. Uh, we tried and uh, we did well achieving a balance between what's necessary and what's too much. So overall, uh, when uh, we went back and we did, we completed all the interviews, focus groups, um, surveys, etc. We went back to the drawing board and built uh, the product, the uh, title, uh, Primary Path, with these principles in mind that um, can be seen uh, through the pages. It was a very uh, successful, uh, serious uh, project of uh, research that uh, helped us uh, build a series that is helpful to all, to the three big groups that you see on the screen, the coordinators, 
on the teachers and uh, the families. I'm going to switch uh, gears a little bit rather abruptly and I'm going to uh, move into uh, research we did a long time ago, uh, some seven years ago, uh, on interchange. Uh, many of you uh, teaching in um, university and of all settings are uh, aware of, um, of interchange, probably have had in, uh, an interchange book in your hands. Many of you have probably um, learned English at some point using interchange. We had uh, learned uh, from uh, teachers and coordinators that the step between um, third and fourth edition was too short, that there weren't enough changes, enough uh, differences to make it, um, uh, to keep it current. So there were many, many uh, hard decisions to made uh, to be made uh, in order to be the, the fifth edition. Again, uh, we went to our only source of information, the uh, teachers and coordinators, uh, the programs, and they told us loud and clear what is it, what was it at the moment that uh, interchange uh, needed to be successful and to be uh, um, current. On digital, uh, it needed to be mobile, um, um, uh, ready. The, um, up, the design needed an update with more photos, even though some of the basics needed to be kept. The content uh, was getting old. Some um, things were no longer uh, relevant. Readings that looked old, some photos uh, didn't look very uh, current. You also, because many of you probably spoke uh, with us, uh, the grammar um, strand, the grammar uh, component of interchange needed to be more robust. The uh, explanations, more details in grammar, um, more uh, verb tenses introduced earlier, don't wait for uh, book three, uh, do it uh, in book one or book two. Again, uh, refresh the content, offer uh, more teacher support, we asked uh, people, what is uh, current uh, users of interchange, what is it that they wanted to keep the reasons they stayed uh, with interchange? You can ignore uh, the statistics uh, chart uh, that you see below. Uh, this was uh, from an online survey. It just tells you um, it's an example of some of the things uh, that we do. The approach, the general approach, in uh, interchange is something that we heard should not have uh, been uh, modified uh, too much because it was working. The results, um, it was working in the class. The appearance and the digital support were reason number three, but needed work as I uh, mentioned earlier. So after uh, we spent a long time uh, speaking with you with many of your colleagues in many places. We met with the editors, with the publishers. They conveyed this information to the uh, to the authors. And when you look at the fifth uh, edition of uh, Interchange, you will see that the readings are more robust, that there is more writing that was uh, needed that uh, the uh, reading comprehension skills are mm, deeper, uh, go into more uh, critical uh, thinking. That was um, the, the main learners. We uh, paid attention, special attention to the drawbacks, to the things that uh, were making people not so happy. They told us, uh, you told us, the listening are too simple. So they needed to be a little bit more um, uh, sophisticated. Uh, again, uh, the writing needed an upgrade, more vocabulary, and again, the reading uh, comprehension activities. Then um, on the right, you will see, uh, you're seeing the delights, the things that we should not alter, uh, alter uh, too much because they were working well. 
the students felt comfortable with uh, the illustrations, with the overall um, appeal uh, of the book. It's kind of warm, it makes them feel good. So the illustrations as a whole make the book warm and friendly, even though they were, of course, updated, more photos were added, but the general um, spirit of the book um, should have been kept. And um, the um, sections in each of the in each of the units of uh, interchange, the speaking, the grammar, the pronunciation, the listening, etc. It's uh, exactly what uh, students need. They did appreciated this uh, sequence, so we decided uh, to keep. In sum, this was a very good uh, exercise because it was, again, very, very difficult. They, uh, there is a saying in English that you don't want to mess with success, and if it is um, working, if it is not broken, don't fix it. So it was, um, it was a very laborious uh, process that uh, we engage uh, in, uh, again, with the editors, with the publishers, illustrators, Etc. to uh, produce uh, something, a new version, a new life for interchange that will please uh, the people who were using it, keep the features that uh, make it successful. This is very difficult because we often like things and we don't necessarily know uh, what we like about them. So it was an exercise of um, analyzing and thinking out loud together uh, with you guys. And it was extremely, extremely successful. We are uh, very happy with it. The third uh, example I would like to uh, bring to uh, your attention today is uh, digital, uh, digital research. You all know that there is a lot of talk about digital and um, this gets many people very excited. It gets many people very worried, preoccupied about using uh, digital for uh, English uh, learning and for English teaching. There is a lot about a lot about it. There is a lot of noise uh, about uh, digital, and you taught us um, many uh, very good um, lessons on these. The very first thing that we heard loud and clear is that digital content contributes to a flexible uh, yet structured um, content. What do we mean by that? What did? What do you mean by that? Flexible because uh, unlike paper, digital, you can turn the dial left or right if you want more, if you want less. And um, you can use more this week, perhaps less uh, next week, but the uh, structured uh, part is very important. The internet is full of uh, content that could be used in a classroom, but teachers were very clear that they were spending, that you are spending uh, countless hours looking for uh, material in the web. Yes, you can find a reading about anything, but is that reading appropriate for my A2 or B1 students? Well, maybe that reading that I really like is way above or uh, below level. So that is um, a service, uh, a service that publishers should do to you. And we made good note of it. We um, heard you that um, the uh, Curation uh, aspect of content is time consuming for teachers. So yet you wanted content that is rational, I'm sorry, that is relevant to uh, students because otherwise they will not uh, engage. Um, it needs to be authentic. Um, students get turned off with things that are not relevant to them. And um, there is uh, overwhelming uh, amount of content out there. And um, with children, um, families expect that the book will be finished. So if you add more still from uh, the internet, uh, that will pose a problem. 
on the very uh, right side, uh, you will f uh, see evidence. These are direct quotes uh, from students, uh, from teachers, from coordinators. These are very important to us, and uh, we have them in front of us when we produce materials. Why? We call it the inspiration phase, the inspiration phase of research. And when we look at these quotes, uh, we picture you, <laughs> we picture uh, the teachers, the coordinators, the students or families who told us this thing. And that helps us think to ourselves, will this content that I am producing, that I am proposing, satisfy John or Anne that we spoke with a few months ago? Another big lesson that we learn in digital, and this uh, is about adults, something that was very, very clear to us from the very beginning is that the adult learner is a very busy person. This uh, student, this learner has oftentimes a full time job, maybe a family, maybe he or she is pursuing an MBA in the evening. Then this person uh, comes home and is too tired to go turn on the computer and practice English for half hour after uh, dinner. So what we heard from you is that digital content for all, but for adults with um, especially is compelling. It's easy to access. We don't want to be inserting uh, many codes or going through too many steps. By size, what does by size mean? By size mean in the small doses. There is an exercise I can do in a few minutes. If I'm in the mood, I'll do another one, maybe three. But uh, a task uh, that takes 45 minutes, 30 minutes could be daunting. And um, gamification, short videos, uh, games uh, as well uh, will help uh, with the situation. Students want to learn English. They don't want to study English, obviously. And um, they're very busy. There's, there's a lot going on in their lives. And um, switching to a study mode at 8 p.m. after dinner, after a very, very busy day, it's something that you know better than we do. Uh, is something that needs to be uh, kept in mind. A few quotes uh, from the right that are very inspiring to us. I feel lazy a few minutes before logging on uh, to the platform. Um, it's adapting uh, to their lives. Uh, content and the digital uh, offer needs to adapt to uh, the uh, adult's uh, life. Another thing that became very, very clear to us uh, was mobile. Uh, remember, I told you a couple of minutes ago that this switching to a study mode, getting up from the sofa at 8.30 p.m. and going to the desk, it's, it's like going to the gym. Once you're there, you're happy, but to go there is uh, it's something you think about. So the, um, the opportunity um, was instead of having uh, students, uh, learners, particularly adult learners, uh, walk to the, um, to the desk, walk to the computer, walk to the content, have the content come to them. Where? On the phone, uh, which is next to them uh, in the sofa. Uh, must work offline. Uh, we heard that crystal clear. Uh, digestible tasks, small again, by size. With children, primary and uh, lower secondary, uh, mobile can work, but there are a number of things that need to be kept in mind. It, whatever content uh, is delivered uh, digitally, whether it's games, little practice exercises, whatever it is, needs to live in a safe environment. We all know the dangers uh, out there, especially with uh, young children. It must allow for adult supervision, both at home and uh, when they do it in class, 
um, if they work with their tablets or even their phones in uh, secondary, teachers must be able to see what's going on to make sure that uh, children are not being uh, victims of um, content that is not appropriate. There is also um, desire and appetite for a one-way school initiated communication with families. We know that uh, this is a very delicate issue that schools simply don't have time to respond to 55 emails every day. But the schools do need to be able to send a reminder uh, to parents tomorrow is a special day for uh, whatever. And we know that, uh, we all know that backpack mail often uh, gets lost. I'm now going to read the um, uh, rationale. I'm going to leave it there uh, on the screen uh, for you to, uh, to read. Connections are not always reliable, particularly in a school. Wi-Fi is not um, strong uh, all the time, so it needs to work offline. Safety is um, an issue, a very important issue. Could be distracting. Um, and uh, parents uh, do not necessarily use their uh, phone, their mobiles for uh, school. So there is a learning uh, curve uh, for all here. <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to leave you with the evidence um, on the right, um, on the right hand side. And again, this is our inspiration um, when uh, we produce materials. The very last one is mobiles in the classroom. This is something that works in some places, does not work in others in uh, countries uh, that um, it's simply not allowed. There is a movement uh, towards allowing uh, mobiles for uh, classroom use, particularly in secondary, most definitely in adult. But again, <clears throat> the issue of supervision will be very important. This is the summary uh, of all things uh, digital, simple, and encompasses and brings together all the components, uh, something that teachers and coordinators often resent is the overabundance of components, the paper student book, the ebook, the paper workbook, the digital workbook. Now there are no more CD-ROMs, the platform, uh, the, the digital offer needs to bring them all together. Um, digital and analog must be uh, closely interconnected. Uh, interactivity, it's what um, digital is for and we need to move beyond what can be done uh, on paper, fill in the blanks, etc. The gaming is structured and I don't mean just games but the gamification part of it is important to all, even for young adults that you advance levels, that you get little prizes, little rewards, um, helps with motivation. Adaptivity and, personaliza and personal, uh, personalization is big because um, you know very well that if you have a class of 25 students, you have at the very least five or six levels over there. Uh, you cannot teach five classes at the same time. Um, you try and you do as much as you can, but you cannot be with five uh, students at the same time. So we are understanding digital as the means to help uh, teachers with that, with these mixed uh, level uh, classes. And uh, digital can do that because different students can be uh, receiving uh, different types of uh, work, activities, tasks, depending on their level. So the student who is very advanced can be challenged, whereas the student who needs help can receive uh, support to help him or her uh, come to the uh, level of the class so that teachers can teach. And this is, for me, I spent a lot of time um, speaking with you in the field. And um, I came back uh, saying that digital per se is noise, 
is nothing if it doesn't serve a purpose. And the purpose uh, of digital is to be a teacher assistant, not a teacher substitute, but an assistant. The uh, machine is there to do the leg work, the dirty work, the busy work uh, for teachers so that teachers can do what they do best and is teach instead of correcting homework, instead of doing 10 things at the same time. And this is uh, the job that uh, digital uh, needs to be doing, uh, helping teachers teach. Because something that I say all the time, teachers want what they always wanted. They want to engage their students, they want uh, their students to make progress, and they want the students to notice that they're making progress. And digital has a lot uh, to contribute on that. And that's how we are uh, looking at it uh, at Cambridge. How can we integrate uh, digital content into the um, course, into uh, the materials uh, that uh, the teachers and the students are using? How can digital content, I call it the machine, work in the background helping uh, teachers and uh, learners and um, thank you for uh, your attention thank you for uh, listening and reach out to us uh, if you need more information uh, now you know a little bit what happens after uh, we invite you to participate uh, in surveys or to come to focus groups we know you're very very busy but uh, we beg you to please uh, keep uh, helping us because again uh, you are the only source of information that uh, we have um, the towers of cambridge don't tell us what uh, your needs are thank you and have a beautiful day